a bounded versus unbounded medium. What does that mean? It means when we communicate, what path does our communication take, whether it's sound or radio or whatever, what path does it take? And a bounded medium is probably the easiest to explain. Imagine you're communicating with your brother or sister through a big long set of tubes. You start talking in that tube and the sound only travels down that tube. Well, that's kind of fun, but what's the other advantage to that? The other advantage is, is that someone right next to you, let's just say it's a really good tube, someone next to you could have a completely separate conversation with someone down another tube so they could be communicating the same time you are with no problems, with no interference. A wired network is a bounded communication medium. If you've ever seen Cat5 or Cat6 in bundles, I mean, it will literally get huge, huge bundles of hundreds of wires together, all together, and they can communicate perfectly, freely. So a good example of a bounded medium is the wire. The signal in a wire is bounded to that copper, or you could even say fiber. That's where the signal goes and that's where it stays. Now you may be thinking, well, can't the uh, electricity kind of escape from the wire a little bit? And you're absolutely right, electromagnetic interference. It can do that and it does do that. But it's so little it doesn't affect anyone else. So for the purposes of our discussion here, it really doesn't happen. So the bounded medium has significant advantages. When a signal is sent, it only travels down that particular path, whether it's wire or fiber or our paper towel tube system for communication. Wireless is unbounded. So an unbounded is Wi-Fi. More generically, all radio technology is an unbounded medium. When that signal is sent from point A to point B, where else does it go? It's not a straight line. We can't do just a tiny straight line like a wire from point A to point B. The amount of energy that, that, that would create, the size of antenna that it would take to do that, is basically makes that notion um, impossible for all intents and purposes. So what is bad or good? Why is it worth having a video on bounded versus unbounded? The fact that radio frequency is an unbounded medium is huge. It makes all the difference in the world for how the protocol works. When you get deeper into Wi-Fi and you realize that it's so much more complicated than the wire, this is the simple basic reason. How is it that when one device transmits that everybody around that device hears it? Who's it supposed to go to? I can't physically direct it, so I have to figure out other ways. I also don't have that constant connection medium. On the wire, we have electricity. I can feel electricity. In radio, I don't have the same advantages. When I'm talking in radio, I can't listen. That's a big deal. If you've ever heard of half duplex versus full duplex, that's where this is going. If not, don't worry about it yet. We're definitely going to get to it. So this unbounded medium of Wi-Fi, um, of radio, causes a lot of problems. Well, I don't know if you can call them problems because we just have to live with it. We love wireless, so we don't want to be tethered by a wire. So really, instead of calling them problems, we're just going to look at them as challenges. How is it overcome? The wire is very, very simple. It has a bounded medium. The signal goes from point A to point B. It's really simple. In RF, this radio world, that simple fact that the radio goes pretty much everywhere and we have to contend with all of the devices trying to use the same frequency, that's an issue. Now, if you don't know some of these terms like frequency yet, don't worry about it. Well, that's what we're here for. So it's important to understand that that simple idea that when a signal is traveling uh, via the air, radio, the fact that it's unbounded is an important um, thing to understand that it goes everywhere. Um, that piece uh, is vital. Keep that in the back of your mind when you start seeing how Wi-Fi really starts to work.